गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी गुड मॉर्निंग टूडे टॉपिक इज सिंगल साइड डेफिनेस मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सिंगल साइड डेफिनेस एंड प्रजेंटर इज वेल नोन डॉक्टर अशोक कुमार सिन्हा हेलो या डॉक्टर अमूल्या प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस वॉट सर येस सर गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन या इट्स अ प्रिविलेज अगेन टू इंट्रोड्यूस ए के सिन्हा सर yesterday also we had a very good session uh, regarding certification and i hope you all have learned and uh, understood it in a much better way um, uh, yes uh, sir was uh, a re retired director at ayj nsst uh, mumbai and uh, uh, he has played a major role in launching the national program uh, for providing co cochlear implant surgery under adip scheme and from then the, there are more than 3000 cochlear implant surgeries performed all over india and he is an alumni of aish and um, he um, he was instrumental in starting bslp and maslp and other programs at uh, ayj nssp kolkata and um, he has received many awards uh, at ishakon in the field of audiology and he has also won national award for the welfare of uh, Uh, persons with disabilities from honorary president dr apj abdul kalam on world disabled day in the year 2002 and uh, his um, has been awarded best paper award in the national convention of Ed educators of the deaf conference held in kolkata as well and he has a lot of publication national and international to his credits and um, he has uh, actively contributed to isha as well and he is the clinical director for special olympics um and he has also uh, won professor padma shri is kameshwaran endowment oration uh, award by uh, indian speech and hearing association and bharat award in 2019 and uh, he was the chairperson of the sub committee and member of the core committee for assessment guidelines and procedure for certification of hearing speech language disability which were notified on 5th january 2018 under rights of the persons with disability act 2016 and uh, we all are very eager to hear you on the topic management of single sided deafness today sir over to you thank you dr amulya uh, first of all my sincere thanks to isha and bihar state branch of isha to give me this opportunity to present paper on management of single sided deafness your welcome my presentation sir. my presentation will be based on, on four parts to begin with a brief understanding of single sided deafness definition of uh, single sided deafness causes incidence and prevalence will be discussed followed by the impact of single sided deafness in terms of listening as well as non listening uh, criteria i will be talking about the management of single sided deafness uh, briefly i'll be touching around the implantable uh, techniques which has come up for single sided deafness and focus on conventional method of contralateral routing of signal some people say it is contralateral routing of signal some say it is contralateral uh, routing of off signal uh, contralateral rerouting of signal all are same so i'll be using the term cross cros for contralateral routing of signal in hearing aid in bte model so i'll be discussing about uh, this in detail regarding the research project which has been undertaken during my tenure in kolkata at aliyawa jung national institute of uh, speech and hearing disability and uh, i take this opportunity to thank dr mn nagaraja who was instrumental in giving me the research project when he was director in charge of ayjnst mumbai followed by dr r rangasai who supported all heartedly on this research on cross hearing aid and my colleague i must have a, a special thanks to my colleague uh, indranil chatterjee who is a faculty 
Nitin Aliyavajan, National Institute of Speech Engineering Disability in Kolkata, and our Honorable Secretary also, and uh, my one of the colleague who is a faculty in the training center in Kolkata, Prasenjit Panik, and many other colleagues who have been working for giving the amplification for single-sided deafness. Single-sided deafness is a challenge to the audiologist, but this challenge is not very uh, accepted. Uh, rather, it is largely ignored. Now, the challenge not being accepted or it is being ignored, it depends on one of the criteria. That is, the persons with single-sided deafness, they perform well in white. Now, that seems to be a point where they feel that not much of the hearing problem will come up in terms of communication when they are talking to a single source or single person in a quiet situation. Sometimes, the persons with single-sided deafness, they also compensate in more difficult listening situation by directing the better ear towards the speech signal. Now, that also makes a kind of a habit of a person. And if you very closely watch when you are talking to somebody with a single-sided deafness, you will see they make a slight tilt to the head towards the uh, source of sound that is better ear pointing towards the source of sound. And if you are a very good observer, you can even find out if a person has a single-sided deafness or not. With this, many uh, audiologists also feel that amplification is not required or not very beneficial for persons with single-sided deafness. But if you take a detailed case history, if you have a thorough uh, checkup, you will find that there is an amplification need for person with single-sided deafness, and it is very important that we should able to take care of that. Single-sided deafness and unilateral hearing loss are these two terms same? Almost yes, we can say. Unilateral hearing loss is a uh, broader term, which is irrespective of degree of hearing loss. That is, when you have a unilateral hearing loss, the degree of hearing loss is not a criteria there. But when we are specifying the single-sided deafness, probably the degree matters here, which is severe to profound hearing loss. And the, another criteria for qualifying for single-sided deafness is that the degree of hearing loss is almost like a non-functional hearing. That is, clinically, there is no benefit from the amplification from that ear in terms of speech discrimination or loudness perception, and the other ear functions normally. So that uh, qualifies to be single-sided deafness. In literature, nowadays, the single-sided deafness is basically meant for severe to profound hearing loss. The first single-sided deafness uh, came up from the UK. Let us go for the causes of uh, single-sided deafness. The single-sided deafness can be congenital as well as acquired. Most of the causes are idiopathic sudden sensorineural hearing loss. Almost 50% of the cause is uh, idiopathic sudden hearing loss. One of the major cause of single-sided deafness is uh, surgical intervention in acoustic neuron. Rather, surgical intervent, uh, intervention of acoustic neuroma was my first case which inspired me to have some kind of amplification for single-sided uh, deafness in the clinic po clinical population. Anomalies of inner ear, cochlear nerve deficiency can also be a cause for single-sided deafness. Mums, which we all know, can cause single-sided deafness. Congenital cytomegalovirus CMV infection can also be a cause for uh, uh, single-sided deafness. And we were just uh, discussing whether coronavirus will also have some effect on hearing. That's a matter which we should be able to study. I'm sure some of us will definitely take up this study about the coronavirus and the, its impact on hearing also. Meningitis and autoneuropathy spectrum disorder can also cause the uh, single-sided deafness. Sometimes the blunt trauma to the head, that is physical injury to the head, can also lead to uh, single-sided deafness if the cochlea is damaged to that extent. Vascular insults that damage the artery pathway can also lead to uh, single-sided deafness. 
prevalence, incidence and prevalence of single-sided deafness. The one of the study very recently done in 2018 uh, claims that prevalence of single-sided deafness to be 7.2 percent in general population, which is quite a large one. In USA, almost 60,000 people acquire single-sided deafness for various uh, reasons, uh, which is a quite a large number. The National Health uh, Scheme of UK reports that 9,000 cases per year are added for single-sided deafness. Now we have newborn hearing screening place, uh, hearing screening in place in Western country, and data for single-sided deafness in children or young infant is also coming up. One of the data say suggests that out of total number of children identified, 0.8% are with single-sided deafness. Otherwise, single-sided deafness to be noticed in young children is very difficult. It is only known when the child is sleeping uh, with a better ear on a pillow and then mother is able to call and the child is not able to respond then only or when somebody uses telephone to this side from the other side then he realizes that there is no hearing in the one ear. In India our own study at AYJ NIST Kolkata suggests that six to ten cases were reporting to us for some kind of benefit for single-sided deafness and the study of almost five year cases that is 76 cases the single-sided deafness was prevalent in all age group maximum in 15 to 30 years that is 17 number uh, 17 number 30 to 60 in uh, 36 number so this group age group was the maximum uh, number of person with single-sided deafness in this study the male female is almost same so they, like uh, uh, male it was 55 percent of the population and female 45 percent so almost the same so there was no difference in gender as such right ear left ear difference was also not much even though the more cases reported the single-sided deafness in left ear rather than in the right ear maybe some uh, study able to understand why left ear gets affected more in compared to right ear. Let us now move on to impact of single-sided deafness. The impact of single-sided deafness will depend on many factors. It may be the age, the onset, where the person is working, uh, whether he is a school going or works in a situation where there is a heavy demand of listening. So all these factors will be considered for knowing what is the impact of single-sided deafness. However, if you see the advantage of binaural hearing, so whatever is the advantage of binaural hearing will become the disadvantage of single-sided deafness because binaural hearing is lost. Very commonly, all the patient with single-sided deafness reports that they are not able to localize sound if the sound is coming from the poorer ear or if there is a background noise or multiple speaker, they are not able to localize the source of sound. This is very important uh, that we should be able to localize the source of sound as one of the function of hearing is to orient ourselves in the environment by localizing the sound. So that function is almost lost in single-sided deafness. Now in single-sided deafness, because the uh, sounds which are coming from the poorer ear, especially head uh, casting a shadow and the high frequency having a smaller wavelength do not bend around the head so that the intensity is reduced. Now consonants are the high frequency uh, sounds which are meaning carrier like sa, fa, sh. Now these uh, words uh, reduces in the intensity and therefore the discrimination of sound or discrimination of word becomes very difficult for a person with single-sided deafness. Now these two are one of the major uh, issues which impacts the single-sided deafness. Now if the child has single-sided deafness and he will have the reduced word discrimination score, it will impact the speech and language uh, also, the development of speech and language.
and when we know then if lang development of speech and language is little delayed or becomes little difficult it will also have an academic lag where they, uh, it will have an impact on academic lack also. So school performance will also go down for children with single-sided deafness. In fact, we say that if a child is not performing in school well up to the mark, even though he makes all kind of study, then probably the best thing is to get his hearing tested. So it may be single-sided deafness or central auditory processing disorder. Uh, and therefore, this is very important. Yeah. Yeah. The another major problem with the single-sided deafness becomes that when they are talking to a multiple source of sound or when they are talking in a group, the discrimination of sound becomes very heavy, very difficult, very difficult for them as because the um, binaural hearing, the cocktail party effect which we all know is lost and therefore this problem arises. If you take a detailed case history when you are talking to single-sided deafness, then you will realize that how difficult he becomes than when he goes to a railway station, when he goes to a bus stand, or when he is in a classroom, there he will find it a real difficulty. Or in a home, when all family is sitting together, having a lunch or so, and people talking, there it will become very difficult. Another problem with uh, single-sided deafness is perception of loudness, of sound. Now, with the binaural hearing, when the input comes to the both ear, in brain, it becomes little more. Say like when we have that uh, 3 dB increase, and that makes a difference. Here, the loudness perception by both ear is not done in the brain, and therefore, the persons with single-sided deafness will lose the ability of loudness judgment. And loudness judgment is very important in the day-to-day -day life. Like for example, when somebody bangs the door with uh, anger, you know the loudness. And some uh, thunderstorm or something comes, you know the loudness. When the train gives the whistle and you know that how uh, far train is, that is the perception of loudness. So that part gets missing in single-sided deafness. Another important point which impacts the single-sided deafness is multitasking. Multitasking is, that is, when you have to hear also and do some work by your hand or whatever you have to do. So, uh, simultaneously, you are doing some multitasking. For example, uh, multitasking, the teacher is giving the, uh, checking the assignment in the classroom, but also has to listen to the sound of the student that what they are doing. Or in an office, when you are sitting and you are also looking outside at what happens in the crowd, and but you are still have to manage. So that multitasking type thing problems comes with uh, single-sided deafness. Their performance gets reduced because they are not able to comprehend the binaural hearing, what is required for uh, multiple tasking. Non-hearing problems also arises that because of single-sided deafness, negative emotions develop like especially in socialization part, like in a uh, party, somebody calls calls you from the poorer ear and you are not able to respond. Probably you respond to the other side. So that negative emotions comes. For example, if a person is uh, working in an office where he has to attend meeting and in meeting, he is being placed in a such a situation that his uh, officer is on his poorer side. So when he talks from poorer side, he is not able to listen. So he gets into a, a negative emotions during that. Or during meeting, if people start talking together, then also it is a problem. So collectively, this may reduce the quality of life for persons with single-sided deafness. And here is our intervention that we should intervene and uplift their quality of life by providing the expert in our area. Move on to diagnosis of single-sided deafness. Diagnosis of single-sided deafness is not a very difficult task, but I will suggest here that detailed case history, especially for duration and etiology, is a must. Now, the duration that how long the person has this or when did he able to find out that is important and what could be the cause. As I suggest that there may be some uh, single-sided deafness 
which are related with the onset and it may be a sudden hearing loss sudden hearing loss is something which is we should be very cautious it may be because of space occupying lesion in the brain and therefore a proper referral to a medical specialist has to be done the degree of hearing loss in sudden hearing loss is not a very big issue standard procedure for pure tone audiometry is there but i'll suggest that because sudden uh, single sided deafness is almost severe to profound it will get a shadow curve so the, for the when you are making the threshold estimation air conduction threshold uh, for poorer ear we may feel that it is a shadow curve so to get uh, whether the uh, thresholds are correct or not you can do the stanger test now if stanger test is negative that means the admitted threshold is a correct threshold otherwise it will become a pseudo hypocusis case so for single sided deafness this test reporting is essential must further the pure tone audiometry test result can be measured or can be collaborated with speech audiometry emittance audiometry or any physiological hearing test important in this is also speech discrimination and proper masking because of the uh, difference of the thresholds the speech discrimination and speech masking can also be done diagnostically you can also uh, use the diagnostical criteria of course the uh, instruments may not be available at every place but we can have the judgment of localization even in a different uh, background of noise the sound discrimination score can also be done and that can become the part of the diagnosis of single sided deafness let us move on to the important part of management of single sided deafness management of single sided deafness is a very uh, old thing conventional approach has been there from since 1965 where the first cross hearing aid model both in terms of air conduction cross and bone conduction cross came into the field the author especially the hartford and berry reported about the cross hearing aid uh, in 1965 and eyeglass model both air conduction as well as bone conduction were made available to people but the eyeglass models did not work so much it was not accepted by the people because of bulky uh, thing and uh, very difficult to use it also probably even though personally i have not have any uh, experience of providing or prescribing or practicing eyeglass uh, hearing aid either cross or otherwise also somewhere around 1970s the wide cross hearing aid uh, came into picture in the bt form at that time almost like it's a uh, wide means that these two hearing aids were connected with the y one more hearing aid came is a trans ear mode model where the hearing aid was made in such a way that microphone will convert this uh, signal into a vibration and that vibration is put into the poorer ear that is passed on to the other ear so that also did not find clinical validity more by cross models were also used that for a single sided deafness suppose the other ear has mild hearing loss then there was a by cross model of hearing aid in bt was also used and mentioned in literature modern approach to single sided deafness was the contralateral routing of signal in bta in fm model many multinational company bring brought in the model in a uh, fm model that means we will have now two hearing aid and the signal is crossed from uh, poorer side to a better side through fm model fm model came in the ear uh, model also by cross btfm model were also made personal fm system also came into picture that is the teacher will be wearing the uh, microphone and transmitting the sound through fm which will be received from the poorer ear and transmitted to the better ear that uh, personal fm system also came into the picture 
bone anchored hearing implants or aids commonly baha uh, in 2002 Uh, this uh, came into uh, field and is being used recently probably it will be information and actually it is information to me also even the cochlear implant has come into picture for rehabilitation or management of single sided deafness so let me go reverse that means we will start with the cochlear implant as i said, uh, mentioned earlier i will not be getting into detail of the implantable system but i'll be focusing mostly on the conventional approach fda approved cochlear implant for single sided deafness and asymmetrical hearing loss in july 2019 very recent july 2019 now the reasoning given for approval of fda is twofold one baha or contralateral routing of signal do not actual uh, do not uh, provide the actual benefit in terms of localization in terms of speech discrimination in terms of speech perception in terms of loudness and many other parameters that is the one reason cited for the approval the second reason says that neither that is baha or cross restore hearing in the poorer ear now that is the criteria that has been laid down for approving the cochlear implant as a method of treatment or line of treatment for single sided deafness with the rider this rider is very important please listen carefully the rider here is that before you go for cochlear implant there has to be cross hearing aid trial that is important so before landing into a decision that whether the patient will need a cochlear implant or not the cross hearing aid has to be tried and its benefit to be evaluated that is important and if there is no benefit from the cross then cochlear implant can come into picture further cochlear implant will only be done if there is a functional auditory gap that is also important otherwise sound will not be uh, conducted to the brain and third one which is very important that onset of uh, sudden uh, this or onset of single sided deafness will be less than 10 years if it is more than 10 year then cochlear implant is not allowed and uh, why it is not allowed probably the patient by this time has learned to live uh, with the minimal benefit of cross hearing aid or no amplification that is something which is the uh, in the cochlear implant i personally feel and probably all of you will agree that cochlear implant doesn't seems to be a preferred line of treatment for single sided deafness as on today in india because one it needs a very surgical intervention the cochlear implants are very costly the accessories are equally costly the battery requirement and moreover what will be the real benefit coming in from cochlear implant that has to be uh, decided on or studied on i have the uh, personal experience of uh, cochlear implant when started the cochlear implant program all over india uh, during my tenure in aliyavajang national institute of speech and hearing disability the government of india made a subsidy of rupees 6 lakh which is highest in any of the government program and out of that in the first tender 4 lakh 40000 were spent for buying the instrument itself that was a very high cost for that but with the time on the last tender the cost of implant came down to 3 lakh 29000 that is something very important but we added that cord that this cord which was supposed to be 2500 so we added three more cord because of the people will not able to buy we gave the battery for three years as people will find it difficult so accessories are costly surgical program is costly the places are not there where this can be done so i personally feel that cochlear implant need not be a preferred line of treatment 
as on today for single sided deafness. Let us move on to bone anchored implant. Bone anchored implant got the FDA approval in 2002 for single sided deafness. Before that, FDA has approved for uh, cases with the conductive hearing loss uh, with the middle ear problem uh, and such conditions. So, in uh, FDA approved in 2002. Bone anchored implant works on the principle of osteointegration, the process by which bone cells attach to the uh, titanium implant to form a firm anchor, a permanent anchor. Titanium implants again are costly, but I'm uh, sure it is less costlier than the cochlear implant. And it works on the principle, as I mentioned, of osteo uh, integration. Abutment are placed behind the ear to anchor the sound processor. Sound processor will capture the sound and convert them into vibration, and this vibration is passed on to the uh, better ear cochlea. Bone uh, anchored hearing aids again needs a surgical intervention. There are Baha users in India. Uh, it has started. Some people have started uh, uh, doing the surgery. Baha users are there. But again, it is costly. Accessories need not be a major issue because there are no cord as such. And it's a removable abutment, so not a big issue. But how is the benefit study? That we have to still find out. I will request my colleagues, if they have anybody who are using the Baha, you get the testing done in terms of localization, in terms of speech discrimination, in terms of word discrimination, in terms of word discrimination in background noise and in other places and see the validity uh, of the such um, cases. The third um, approach is the cross FM hearing aids that is contralateral routing of signal in through FM system. Now for FM system, you require a two hearing aid. Two hearing aid will again makes things costly, but it is much cheaper compared to Baha and uh, cochlear implant. There are personal frequency modulation system also, as I mentioned earlier, that teacher wears a microphone and the students, especially these are the for children who have who are studying in the school and receiver is born uh, by the or worn by the person with single sided deafness and sound is transmitted through FM mode. FM mode models are also available in, in the year and I understand the cost may vary from 50,000 to 80,000 rupees for cross FM system, but they are available in India. The companies, the, especially the multinational companies are able to give it to us for uh, description. Let us come to the Conventional cross hearing aid that is important and we'll be making a detailed study for that. Historical perspective, as I mentioned, that Hartford and Berry 1965 that's the article, and uh, you can see this article in uh, Myco series, Myco library series, uh, if it is available in the library, where the cross hearing aids were made both in air conduction model as well as bone conduction model. The concept of open mold was also introduced because the insertion need not have to be done in the better ear as you don't require it. However, as I mentioned, the eyeglass hearing aids were quite discarded and not used by the hearing aid. In 2000, we wanted to have some kind of uh, management for single-sided deafness and i as i just uh, i told in the beginning of my lecture the research project was assigned to us in kolkata when i was working as a head of kolkata center uh, national institute of speech and hearing disability that we were given a research project once again thanks to dr raymond nagaraj to develop a cross model in vt that is in analog uh, type, develop prototype, study the benefits and outcome, and study also the impact on better ear. That is was important. That if you are giving some kind of amplification in the better ear, whether there is some shift in threshold or not, that has to be tested or studied. And then finally, transfer the technology 
for use for clinical population. What we uh, did at that particular time, we did not have any of the cross hearing aid available. So we started with the scratch. We took the hearing aid and got into the principle of control letter routine that we will put a uh, microphone at the poorer ear, as you can see in this uh, graph, microphone here, which will be attached to the amplifier. An amplifier is driven by the battery and the output is being transferred to the better ear through the receiver, through the receiver and the receiver is connected by a wire. The receiver is connected to wire and uh, wire an open ear mode that is only the tube which will be parallel to uh, pinna in front of external altimeters will be there. So we use this uh, principle. Actually, it is a little bit modified than what is reported in the literature. We got into model of hearing aid, which has a low gain, uh, very low gain. And we got one hearing aid and one shell of the hearing aid. Shell means only the body case. There was nothing inside. We removed the uh, receiver from the hearing aid. The receiver was removed and that's what you will see here in this hearing aid. Only microphone is here. No receiver is there in the hearing aid. Now we made a connection to amplifier through the cord or receiver which will get connected to a jack here to the shell of hearing aid. The other hearing aid which is empty shell here and that is receiver taken out from this hearing aid is connected to another shell of the hearing aid here. Now this tube is an open mode. This tube is an open mode and this is a uh, this just a uh, hearing aid cord, a simple hearing aid cord which has been there with a single uh, hook here. Now this hook is attached here will give you a cross hearing aid. In this diagram you can see this is the from the poorer ear. So we have a battery, we have an amplifier. This is the microphone which will pick up the sound and deliver this sound to the uh, through the cord, that hearing aid cord to the speaker here. And from the tube, there is a tube which will be in front of the ear or external altimeters, which will act as an open mode. And that becomes the cross hearing aid which comes into the picture. The final product looked like this uh, of cross hearing aid, which we made. And when it is worn by a patient here, a school going child, uh, it will look like this. This product was uh, placed in front of Isha Convention in 2000. And I'm very happy that I got the best paper award for this. And Dr. Asha Yatiraj, still I remember, she was the chairperson. Now, important point came that we have modified the one VT hearing aid into a cross hearing aid, whether the electroacoustic characteristic of the cross hearing aid remains same or changed. So when we studied that, there is a difference. There is a difference like, for example, for high frequency average is 123 without making a modification and after modification, it became then 17.9. So almost a drop of almost 10 dB. The same was seen in high frequency average full on gain that was in 57.9 drop is from 44. One way it was found to be good that we don't need higher intensity. We need less intensity only or uh, amplification. So there is a drop and this drop is due to adding of six to eight inches of uh, body worn hearing aid wire. But importantly, the effect or on distortion was seen was very less. The total harmonic distortion did not change dramatically. Rather, if you see that 1.2 became 1.3, 1.4 became 1.6, 0.5 became 0.5, uh, 0.6 became 0.5. That is also there. And equivalent input noise level, little increase was seen. That is from 20.4 dB to 21.1 dB. We can very well say that modification in the hearing aid did drop in the output, but it not has distorted the sound much and equivalent input noise is also not much. So it is good that person can able to 
have the amplified sound as well as natural sound in a better manner. We also studied the head shadow effect or the open mode. That is very important that we know that how things will work here. In the better year, we saw when we did the study on the head baffle effect that we see that there was no gain of the hearing aid below 800 hertz and there was a marginal gain between uh, 1500 hertz 800 to 1500 hertz and small gain around uh, more than 1500 hertz so this is important where patient will not feel any kind of inconvenience in terms of amplified sound getting into the uh, normal ear so patient is likely to receive the normal sounds also and amplified sound also and make a clear distinction and that is the probably reason which I feel that most of our cases reported after being fitted with cross hearing aid that they are able to hear in the poorer ear also. Though there was no uh, input into poorer ear, but input from the poorer ear side was being to the better ear side. But many of my patients reported that they can able to hear in the poorer ear. Now, we did an elaborate study on evaluation of benefit of cross hearing aid. That was very important for us. We started with the localization when we presented sound from the terrier, poorer ear on the back. Uh, so even though we did not have an elaborate instrument, but in clinical place, we could able to make some speakers and, uh, and do the testing. We also evaluated the conversational performance from the better ear when the sound is incidental from better ear and poorer ear we also studied the improvement in various listening environment like private place market railway station and as i mentioned we also uh, studied the impact of air conduction threshold of better ear over a period of five years social responses were also taken from the cross hearing aid for single-sided deafness was a significant uh, improvement in localization ability as you see in the graph that is from unaided poor sight and the uh, when the aided performance was seen it almost reached 100 percent but let me tell you that this is not the first trial this is after training and this is important for making or demonstrating the use of amplification to single-sided deafness you don't you cannot do it in a single session you will have to do a multiple session where he will need some time for the training and after the training the one can able to locate the sound very well using the cross hearing gate and making a difference between the natural sound input into the uh, better ear as well as the amplified sound into the better ear so there was a good improvement of in terms of localization almost 100 percent from poorer ear when sound is instant from poorer ear as well as from back also which you can see in the graph when we studied about the conversational performance the conversion performance from poorer side rose from 48 percent to 95 percent so that is some this is very significant that means when a person was given to talk we gave a story and then we asked some questions about that the answering part went up to 95 percent rather than 48 percent which was there in the unaided side from front also though front there was not much problem reported always we had already the base score was 72 percent but this base score also improved to 95 percent using the cross hearing aid uh, in the bte model so that is very important for this various improvement uh, improvement in various listening situation were also studied uh, situations like in quiet in uh, public place crowded place listening to tv public functions classrooms railway station listening to music the unaided and aided responses makes a clear indication that there is a marvelous improvement in terms of uh, performing in listening tasks to different situations. If you just see the point number 10 
which is uh, sorry point number nine point number nine which is in the railway station there people said that able to hear much better one of the client reported that he can able to hear the railway announcement very clearly with the cross hearing aid which he could not do without the cross hearing aid so uh, cross hearing aid improved the ability of listening when there is a a challenging uh, situation like multiple uh, source of sound or crowded place so maybe the clinical trial can extend outside the clinic also or within clinic if you can generate the uh, system where you have uh, multiple speakers and then testing of such situation can also be done in the clinic and therefore i again say that clinical trial or the trial of hearing aid should not be in one session it can be in the multiple session we also studied that because we are give, ampli putting an amplified sound in the better ear whether there will be shift in the threshold or not that also we studied what we did that baseline we took the base data that is the first audiogram data uh, of air conduction threshold as zero and then from periodically we tested and there the change or shift uh, in threshold were recorded after two to three years of use of hearing aid there was no significant change in the air conduction threshold like for example if you see in this graph it is only maximum sorry it is from minus 2 db to 1.5 db only so there was a difference not even uh, 5 db differences were there but when you do the average it comes to only 1.5 to minus 2 db only so there was no much change what we said is why there is no change because the output of the hearing aid does not exceed the 80 db decibel it is much below that and uh, the mold use that is open mold so open mold will damp the low frequencies on only high frequencies will be sent which is a requirement for cross hearing aid and that is the improvement here while doing it for a long period there was one case who came from usa and was using cross hearing aid he opined that wire can be disposed of then the hearing aid will be much better to hear for this one alternate available was FM, but we did not have the technology to bring FM uh, in our lab, that is in Kolkata, Aliyavajan National Institute of Speech and Hearing Disability. We tried an innovative idea that we used a telecoil. What we did, took a hearing aid, and there we removed the uh, receiver and put the mode to T coil. So the output will go into T coil. In the other hearing aid, we removed the receiver and but put another T coil and brought it. Sorry, we removed the microphone and brought the telecoil connected to amplifier and receiver, and then cross hearing aid was made without wire. So it was a wireless analog cross hearing aid. Again, this product was placed in Isha conference, and I'm very happy that there also I got the best paper award. Thanks to all my colleagues who supported for such an innovation. Even though the telecoil needs a more number of uh, winding, that was done by locally, local uh, person who winded telecoil for us, but we can use. Uh, however, not much research went on to this because it costed double of the uh, earlier cross hearing aid as two hearing aids were required for making the modification in the development of cordless cross hearing aid. We also used the cross hearing aid in a special case. There was a very interesting case. Uh, one special educator who has the single sided deafness along with the uh, so uh, deafness in the better ear. Better ear, he was using CIC. Poorer ear was profound SN hearing loss, and the better ear was almost moderate SN hearing loss. So he was using CIC in better ear. When we used cross on him, he also improved in terms of localization. He also improved upon the speech discrimination. He also improved upon the listening situation, especially in classroom where he was working. And 
he says because he understand more about hearing being a special educator that he is getting a binaural hearing almost binaural hearing using this cross uh, this was a very uh, good and he is a user of the uh, cross hearing aid this article also was published in pakistan journal of otolaryngology uh, in the year 2007 or 8 we also did the modification for cross hearing aid that if a single sided deafness was along with the uh, mild hearing loss in better ear then what we did was the vent or the mold sorry where mold which was there parallel to uh, pinna and in front of uh, external audimeters was bent towards the external audimeters now that bending increased the amplification bending increased the amplification and directed the sound towards the uh, in the external audimeters so that also helped for uh, people having mild hearing loss in one year and uh, severe to profound hearing loss in the other year we also tried a further insertion with the uh, tube uh, this ear tip ear tip for little moderate hearing loss that also worked so we use this in a another innovative manner almost till date more than 300 case have been fitted with cross hearing aid which is a remarkable number at kolkata as well as in mumbai and other parts the success with amplification which i feel is for two reasons one that we take a very clear medical and social history and age occupation listening and most importantly their motivation for amplification now this motivation for amplification cannot be made by just saying motivation for amplification will only come when you demonstrate the benefit of amplification to patient with single-sided deafness that is very important for that you need to have a stock of cross hearing aid in fm model or analog wired model or whatever so you can if you can demonstrate the people will go for they can purchase the equipment and they can use the equipment it will not be in a dresser drawer syndrome that they will buy and keep the hearing aid in the uh, drawers so these two uh, things in clinical practice uh, ensured that we are success with amplification amplification with the person with single sided deafness positive approach and innovation because everybody will need a little slightly different way of uh, fitting of the cross hearing aid so keep a positive approach and innovation which will help you to work up uh, work up for single sided deafness my work and the whole team it was fetched me the national award and a very happy day when i received the award from dr abdul kalam the ex president of india then president of india at the end i will suggest that if analog cross hearing aid in bt model benefits so much as we studied published then why we will not able to get the more benefit in programmable bt hearing so time is that we can convert programmable hearing aid into cross hearing aid and see if we can able to help much better to our single sided deafness i am not undermining the implantable aids or fm hearing aids fm hearing aids are also good implantable hearing aids uh, like baha or cochlear implant has its own uh, benefit but keeping in mind the cost effectiveness this hearing aid will be more useful i suggest that national institute teaching institute they have the electronic lab they can convert that programmable hearing aid programmable hearing aid are also not very costly these days they can convert this into cross hearing aid and keep this ready for stock for hearing aid trial and when patient comes use this and this will be very important on learning for our new students learning for new people who are coming into the field and we can even expand our clinical practice and of course we can participate to the research uh, even though the technology is very old technology is not a new one 
but sometimes the old technologies as good as as our prime minister just yesterday made sure that you don't have to buy a mask if you are not in touch with the patient or you are going on road just uh, use your uh, towel whatever you have at home that will also do and it will be effective so that kind of thing with this approach we can definitely provide the best services to single-sided deafness take this as a challenge don't just ignore those just counsel that your one year is good so you can manage or sit in front of the row in classroom or ensure that people are on your better side uh, when talking but take the challenge head on and provide amplification in any form and help the people with single-sided deafness thank you so much for listening once again keep a social distance and defeat coronavirus thank you all Sir. Thank you. Very good presentation. I think uh, uh, all the uh, attendees have understood. And many question has come. Okay. So, there will be a third question also. Yes. 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 Uh, first question has come. Uh, is okay. there any? Significant difference between cross and by cross in terms of localization. As uh, uh, you said in cross, person can mm -hmm. make the difference between artificial sound and natural sound. Yes. Uh, just re repeat the question. What is it in by cross? Uh, is there any significant difference between cross and by cross okay okay uh, okay I got it. yes definitely see like uh, just cross hearing aid will assume that the uh, other ear is absolutely normal okay there is no need for any other amplification but what happens if the poorer ear the better ear also has little bit of hearing loss now that hearing loss is to be compensated now for that compensation if you using a by cross and if you use an open mold, there is a person can able to localize the sound more appropriately as input is received from the poorer ear as well as in the better ear. Now here, there was a difference between natural sound and amplified sound, right? Here, the both sounds are being amplified, but the sounds amplified will differ in terms of the intensity that the uh, better ear, it is more intense and poorer ear, it is less. And the difference between intensity is the Q4 localization. So definitely by cross helps, but we got to do this study. These are the reported in uh, literature. We understand that, but once we use by cross and see the uh, uh, improvement, then only we will able to know. Otherwise, theoretically, yes, there will be improvement. Uh, okay. sir, another question has come. Uh, yes. What about in by cross? If he's yeah. getting uh, artificial sound in better ear and uh, uh, natural. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Complete it. Uh, Yes. Uh, uh, what about uh, in by cross? Mm -hmm. Is artificial sound in better ear and not natural sound? And not natural sound. No, no. In by cross, what is in by cross is in by cross means there is a loss in uh, better ear better also. Ear. Yeah. Yes, so that loss also has to be compensated and for that only we are using a little bit of amplification there also. Okay, so in the by cross that amplification will help in localization or improving the speech discrimination score. Definitely it will help. Uh, 
otherwise cross hearing aid will not be effective if the other ear has hearing loss and if you put a open mold that open mold will not give the input to uh, the ear so neither the natural sound input will also be less and the amplified sound will input will also be less so that will not be effective in a uh, cross so by cross will be more effective okay and, uh, yes sir uh, One question has come, sir. Uh, uh, can you explain what is uh, a shadow effect? Shadow effect, okay. Like, for example, uh, when sound is coming from right side, right, and the right ear has a profound hearing loss, right, so there will be no input in the right ear. Now, when sound comes the low frequency has a uh, low frequency sound has a larger wavelength, so they will turn around the head and they will get into the better ear whereas the high frequency will not so that is almost casting a shadow in front between the two ear in single sided deafness now we have to overcome this shadow and that shadow overcoming is uh, routing the signal to other side and that helps in discrimination of speech or localization that is head is casting a kind of a shadow in such case it is important for us, say like for example, in the normal ear, when a sound is coming from one side, it impacts the or when it incident on the that side, it is intensity is more. When it goes to other side, intensity is less. So brain manages that there is a difference in intensity and that more intensity on the right side, therefore sound is coming from right side. Now this part of uh, brain analysis is not able to be done by a person with single sided deafness and therefore has a localization problem. Now this head which is casting a shadow can be overcome when we use the contralateral routing of signal. Is okay? Sir, another question has come that in yeah. uh, case of sudden profound unilateral session hearing loss, yeah. as in mumps, uh, yes. what are the uh, management options uh, prior to fitting hearing aid? Okay. I think when, as I mentioned, when there is a sudden hearing loss and if onset is very recent, I'm sure that one has to refer it to medical doctor first because sudden hearing loss may have many pathology but uh, sorry etiology but in your case as you are saying in mumps so mumps has been there the infection was there now it is okay now it is a irreversible but even if it is irreversible i wish that before you take any amplification get a uh, medical clearance for uh, amplification intervention so i'm sure for such cases to be referred to a medical doctor or ent specialist so that you can go for any amplification or not in such case ah. is that okay and uh, for nowadays uh, uh, for a sudden uh, onset of hearing loss uh, yes in, uh, in lateral hearing uh, in lateral yes. uh, uh, is uh, i mean in single side uh, uh -huh. the, uh, most of the ENT surgeon using interactive Panama uh, uh, Yes, yes. Yeah, there is a medical uh, intervention. Yeah, yes. medical intervention. And a medical intervention. Yeah. I, I think so if it is a sudden hearing loss of a recent onset, then we must refer it to medical specialist. Ah, yeah. and generally, medical uh, there there is a procedure for sudden hearing loss, as uh, you have been mentioning, that vasodilators are given or some kind of drugs given to resume the supply to cochlea and see if cochlea recovers. And in many cases, uh, I'm sure you must have also seen in your clinical practice that sudden hearing loss cases they improve and some improve dramatically. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that is also an intervention, but that is a medical intervention, not an audiological uh, intervention. Uh, and sir, uh, it's not a question. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think nowadays, uh, uh, 
uh, in cross sharing it, wireless technology has also has come. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes, the uh, FM model is available. Uh, I think there are companies, Phonak, uh, Widex, Signa, uh, Signia, so, so I think that the costing around from uh, around 40 or to 50,000 rupees. I think I think so. I'm not very sure, but you can check it with the, the uh, distributors or dealers or the manufacturers. The com this uh, cross hearing aid in FM form is available in India. Dr. Amulya, are you visual? Uh, can you see the, uh, any more, more yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can see. Um, so the next question is: um, Yeah. Uh, has cochlear implant been done in uh, single-sided deafness cases in India, and how was the acceptance by the patient and challenges faced during mapping and during habilitation? Uh, as I just mentioned, the approval just came in July 2019. And the first report from America, which is which I have been able to get hold on, was of uh, October November. So in India, I am not very sure that any single-sided deafness person has underwent uh, cochlear implant surgery as such, nor any of the ENT ever. When we discuss in some program, has mentioned that cochlear implant can be done for single-sided deafness in India as such. So I'm not very sure that if any of the surgical intervention for single-sided deafness has been done in India. But what I mentioned was that the FDA has approved. This is a mode of treatment, line of treatment provided that you demonstrate very clearly that cross hearing aid does not have the amplification benefit to the patient, then only. And second criteria, which I mentioned, that the onset should be less than 10 years. And third criteria, which I mentioned, that auditory nerve should be okay. So I'm not very sure that in India, if any single-sided deafness, anybody has got the surgery done. So we surgery. really have a difficulty in answering that question. Okay. Another okay. reason to... Yeah. Another reason for not uh, going for implant in India in single-sided deafness is the our more program is uh, government funded and they don't give uh, for uh, single-sided. So that's also reasons. No, no, no. In, in a government funded, it is very clear that one has a bilateral severe to profound deafness. Bilateral. So when you have a single-sided deafness, you are not a part there. Okay, and uh, very important, I think I will bring into discussion is uh, carrying forward from yesterday that if you have a single sided deafness and calculate the hearing disability, you will not get into a benchmark disability of 40%. So once you don't get a disability for 40%, you are not entitled for any bit from government of India in, under the edit scheme. So that also is a one of Yes, okay. Sir. Yeah. Doctor Muni, next question. question. Yes, sir. Sir, the baha yeah. indirectly uh, stimulating the better cochlea. Then, what's the point to choose baha? Is it better to go for cross? Please explain. Oh, that's a very interesting question. Even this comes to my mind also. But then, important here is that Baha is a technology which is creating a input from the poorer side and it is going into the uh, same cochlea. If it is going because it is profound or severe, it has no meaning. It passes on to better cochlea. Now that difference at that this that results into a amplification benefit in terms of localization. That is their thing. But as I said, that I also don't have much of experience with Baha. So those who have uh, cases where Baha has been done, then how they are localizing and how they have improvement in uh, um, speech discrimination score with Baha and without Baha, that is to be studied and then only we can able to. What I 
make a point here the fda approval for baha which came in 2002 it also came with a rider that again there should be uh, documented that cross hearing aid does not benefit the person now that is important so if cross hearing aid is not benefiting so probably the localization part with baha may also be a difficult one but there will be an improvement but it not be a normal as i said that fda said for cochlear implants saying that the earlier technique is not restoring the hearing of poorer ear like baha also does not restore the hearing of poorer ear therefore cochlear implant is uh, recommended by fda with riders so it is to be uh, tested for a user if you have some user please do a detailed uh, testing and come up with the results is it okay okay uh, uh, so as per your clinical experience what is the most effective management option for uh, congenital single-sided case deafness definitely cross hearing aid definitely like my youngest uh, child you will uh, not believe that my youngest child whom i fitted this uh, cross hearing aid is of four years four years and he was so happy and he did not remove the hearing aid while sleeping also the mother has to take out the hearing aid when the child goes for sleep only after he has slept then only otherwise he will not allow and believe me the car cross hearing aid in such children has improved the academic performance also one of our child who was fitted in the uh, cross hearing aid in delhi when he was in class 8, his marks were say around 60% or so. In 9th and 10th, he performed about 80 plus percentage. So that also makes a lot of difference. And I'm 100% sure that even though it is not giving you a binaural hearing, but hearing from affected side, hearing from distance does make improvement in terms of language, speech. And as I said, the multitasking becomes easier using the cross hearing aid. That is more important and therefore the best option right now will be a cross hearing aid is it okay so what are the yes sir so what are the early signs to recognize uh, a single-sided deafness in an in a uh, toddler yes it's a very good question as i mentioned that if you observe a person with a single-sided deafness you will see that his head is little tilted towards you from the better ear that is first symptom now from them they, they they themselves will find out only when say like for example we are using telephone and when we go for a long conversation we shift hand from right hand to left hand so when you put on left hand then you say oh i am not able to hear better but if you bring it to right ear you hear better then you realize oh my one ear seems to be not functioning and then they will realize that it is not functioning at all when they come to uh hearing testing without hearing testing they will say even if they block the better ear by palm they can still able to get some hearing so they will not know whether i hear little or i hear i do not hear at all in the poorer ear so that way people can able to find as i mentioned one one of our uh, parent reported that he they suspected hearing loss only when the child was sleeping in one direction and he will not get up when calling but other direction when you call he will get up so that made them to get for a hearing testing and then we realized that this is a single-sided deafness so this kind of thing can be the early symptoms for single-sided deafness is that okay yes sir uh, so uh, why is open mold hearing aid used okay this is a uh, open hearing aid. mold is used actually when you say mold we get confusion that there is a mold but there is no mold it is only the tube and the tube is in front of uh, external otimeters okay that is open mold open mold or you can also have the mold fitted with a whole of the curvature uh, taken out but that is cumbersome so just have a small tube which is there in front of the external otimeters which act as a open mold open mold has two advantage one that when we put the mold inside I'm sure everybody will know about hollow effect. Hollow effect is when you block the external canal, there is a resonance in the external otimeters in the low frequency, like uh, 
I'll give you an example that if you take an empty glass, bring it to your ear, near to your ear, you will hear a sound, that hollowness sound, that is known as hollow effect. So remove that hollow effect, open mold is important. So low frequency sounds are cut. So that will not uh, create annoyance in the ear and they will allow the passage of natural sound also. For these both reasons, open molds are very essential. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, if, if a patient has uh, single-sided deafness for more than 10 years and he has not undergone for any intervention, then can yes. we suggest him with cochlear implant if it's why no. no why? As, as per the FDA approval, no. The reason uh, is that a person who has not undergone any kind of intervention after 10 years, now if that intervention helps, that cross-hearing aid helps, fine. Even cross hearing aid does not help. The FDA approval does not allow for a cochlear implant in uh, line of treatment for such cases. I am sure why they have not done is one to study uh, such cases, and probably with the ten years of time, people do learn some uh, kind of uh, habit to compensate. As I mentioned, the turning of head towards the source of sound or ensuring that they in the meeting they sit in a place where they are comfortable in listening or it is also one negative point that they withdraw from the society that they don't want to involve in any communication uh, difficult situation of communication so they are managing it so probably that is the reason why the fda approval has come with such a rider is it okay yes sir uh, yeah. the next one um uh, okay, the that participant uh, recently saw a patient with left-sided severe to profound hearing loss and right-sided okay. normal hearing up to one kilohertz, followed okay. by severe to profound high-frequency SNH. In such yes. patient, Baha and cross was recommended. But the okay. question is, how does a cross hearing aid work in such patient? Uh, okay. I that person doesn't know how beneficial it would be. So okay. she just wants to know. Right. Now, like for example, if you do not know how he will be benefited, then why recommendation? That is first place. Anyway, that is not an important issue. If a person has normal hearing up to say one kilohertz and then dip in 2K or 4K or 8K, it is very simple and very easy and very fruitful that what we have studied, that if you instead this open mold which the tube which is the parallel to external automators sorry uh, pinna can be directed towards the external automators that simple modification in cross will give a best result there is no need of baha in such case uh, take it from me only thing the tube to be inserted towards the external the moment you insert the tube there is a high frequency sound amplification from the uh, poorer ear and that is sufficient to take care of the uh, compensate that uh, hearing loss in high frequency and patient can able to uh, get all the benefit which we have already tried and fitted also so that is the important but you have to demonstrate this for that demonstration you need a cross hearing aid and show him the improvement then only he will realize and definitely he will go for one such is it okay yes sir yeah. Uh, so, would you like to take more questions? Okay, no issue. Uh, okay. Um, can you explain the benefit uh, about the personal amplification versus group amplification? Uh, generally, now group amplification, like we had that hardware system earlier, uh, hardware system or loop induction system. Now uh, we have also have 3D loop induction system. Uh, that systems are there, but then the system doesn't really get into manufacturing because they did not have the FDA approval as such. Uh, whereas the personal amplification do have. So personal amplification seems to be a better option than the group uh, one. Uh, in a group, uh, it was earlier for the special school but now special schools have become inclusive in nature. So number of special schools are getting down and more people are getting into inclusive education. So in inclusive education, 
personal amplification will be more appropriate than a group one even in classrooms like some of the good classrooms are uh, fitted with amplifier which amplifies the sound all over the classroom so that teacher does not have to speak at loud sound and students will get the input on a little higher uh, threshold which will be easy for understanding there also the personal fm system are more useful than the group uh, system which are there like uh, as i mentioned the wired system the hard hardwire system or the loop induction system so personal uh, applications are best choice it's okay yes sir yeah um Uh, so the next one, um, what's the maximum degree of loss in better ear should we recommend uh, by cross? Uh, I think say like when we are talking about by cross, the, it should be not more than moderate. Up to moderate one can, but uh, when it is moderate, then you have to plug the ear. That means you have to now use a mold. But for mild, as I said, you can uh, go ahead with the uh, slight open mold also. But uh, for the moderate loss, one has to plug the ear. Their localization may be a little difficult than into the open mold, as per the open mold. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the next question is in case of cr uh, cross, individual might hear noise in better ear which will disturb the natural hearing of better ear how to counsel patient in this condition that's right very right suppose there is a noisy area now in the noisy area there are two type of noise one which interfere with the speech signal the other one is that you just can't do anything to it like for example signal to noise ratio if it is up to 15 db the normal ears will be able to get the uh, information out that means you can able to discriminate but if signal to noise ratio is much more than 15 db even normal hearing people will find difficulty in understanding the speech in that part so we have to counsel like this that if you are in a such a place that even a normal hearing person cannot understand because of the high level of noise you will also not able to understand at all what we are trying to help you is that when a normal hearing person can able to understand the uh, sound in a noisy area whether you can also do it or not but otherwise no like for example suppose we go to a crowded place which is very noisy so we will also not able to understand anything though we have a normal hearing uh, so for a cross hearing aid user will also have a same effect what is important is in the noise when normal hearing people can able to hear we are trying to help you also because in that situation normal hearing people can hear but you will not able to hear because of single sided deafness and that is the compensation so that way we can able to counsel is it okay yes sir uh, um Sir, uh, I think two or three are asking whether a CIC model or IIC model uh, can be used for cross hearing gate in cosmetic. Yes, 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 yes. That's yes. Cosmetically, yes, because if, if, if the people can afford to pay, uh, yes. But again, I will say that demonstrate the use, the amplification use, or the advantages which you are going to demonstrate them. They will definitely buy if they had the buying capacity they will definitely buy no issue in that 100 okay, okay. Uh, if, yeah. if they have uh, um, tinnitus along with uh, profound hearing loss should they go for cross hearing aids uh, this is also one important one now we very well know that tinnitus in the profound hearing loss we have the tinnitus management therapy and all so that can also be done so don't wait for the cross hearing aid to get rid of tinnitus tinnitus will definitely be out when we do the tinnitus retaining therapy so along with the cross tinnitus retaining therapy can be a part as we have seen in many of the cases where hearing loss is there and we recommend a hearing aid after use of hearing aid along with tinnitus 
both coming together can bring down the tinnitus level so my ex personal experience will be that you can go for counseling you can go for tinnitus therapy along with cross hearing aid no issue but make clear things that for tinnitus cross hearing aid is not the line of treatment that is important so we cannot say that cross hearing aid is you will get the tinnitus out therefore use cross hearing aid and then after some time we will come back and say that my tinnitus persists so take back your cross hearing aid okay okay um so the next question as you yes. talk about by cross hearing aid if both the ears has the intraoral attenuation of around 40 or more than 40 db suppose one ear has mild snhl and the other severe hearing loss mm -hmm. should we go for mm -hmm. by cross at that time too uh, as the as the person fees the providing hearing aid amplification in poorer ear uh, is not will, will not give so much uh, satisfactory results in terms of localization and better discrimination so in such cases what has to be done uh like for example if the uh, one ear is mild hearing loss the other ear is uh, like severe as you mentioned about no so in that case if you are looking for cross hearing aid there is no need even for uh, by cross because mild loss can be compensated by the open mold itself so there is no need for getting into a uh, pattern of uh, amplification on the other side there is no need even i feel so even if it is required then we can do it but, but it should be like it will be helping him like for example uh, when we do the trial for hearing aid mono orally we always say that you use the hearing aid trial mono orally and also binaurally in some cases binaural hearing brings a poorer result than mono oral hearing aid even though that uh, the percentage of population is very less so one can always try and find it out whether by cross is helping or it is making a no difference if it is not making any difference no question of prescribing a by cross if it is making a difference yes then only otherwise no so that is important that we have to demonstrate the benefit that is more important here. is that okay yes sir perfect yeah. uh, so one more question uh, um, how about the auditory training uh, for uh, ssd clients yes it's very important i mentioned that's like for example when we are talking about localization it is not the score of first trial no when we have put up the hearing aid and the cross hearing aid and then doing the localization and he is able to do it no it is a training that's what i mentioned that at least you have a multiple clinical uh, trials sessions to done so that he gets used to it and train him to localize like for example sometime we did this that we ask the patient to close the eyes and see where uh, sound is and just have a feel you don't have to tell us you just have a feel that sound is coming from which side so five trials are given and the sixth trial consistently then they say what do you think it is coming from right side or left side he says right side then we show the signal that look it is coming from the right side so he is now pointing correctly so he is making a mental framework that how i am able to differentiate between the intensity the time lapse and natural sound versus amplified sound so the training is very much important definitely and that is where again important that they will be the user of hearing aid not a dresser drawer syndrome that they will buy and keep it in a drawer is that okay yes sir um uh, one more question is there any chance of deterioration of hearing in better ear if the patient yes. is using hearing it with cross cross hearing yeah. yeah that's what in our study also like we have been doing it and uh, i also mentioned to my colleagues also that when cross hearing it has been prescribed you will always ask him to come back at least after one year that and test the uh, thresholds again and match with the uh, base audiogram sometime it may happen that with time some ssds are progressive in nature or the other ear may develop hearing loss that also is there it's not that uh, ssd will never progress it may be there may be cases where ssd also be a progressive in nature so if it is a progression in uh, bad ear no issue but if it is a progression in uh, 
the better year then issue will become issue will become so is there any problem like he is a diabetes or whatever so we can able to see or he is using any kind of medicine so we can always inform doctor that look he has already a sensory hearing loss in one year so when you prescribe ensure that proper doses are there which will not affect the better ear so a regular audiogram is essential and compare this to base audiogram and if you find any discrepancy always have a medical referral also so that you can able to my point here is those who are in clinical practice like in a government we will not say that more and more people will come but if you are in a private practice ensure this so that they keep coming to you and get the help proper help so you expand your practice as well as you do a good service to humans is it okay yes sir um so um uh, uh is any study being conducted has any study we conducted regarding the outcome measure of cross yes the studies have been there they are already there uh, hearing aid journal uh, is have been published uh, two three studies are there and uh, one uh, study has come from mumbai also in the local uh, article so there are studies where uh, we have seen but let me tell you that the uh, analog cross study which are there in india and that is only from our institute as such not many other institute have used cross hearing aid so if more and more people start working for sst and have the management strategy by using any form of cross hearing aid whether analog wired or uh, fm wireless or baha uh, this uh, will enrich the knowledge of uh, helping the people with uh, single sided deafness is that okay as yes, i mentioned one stu one study which we have said about cross and cic which was published in pakistan journal of otolaryngology also okay okay Uh, so, yeah. how should be the position of the loudspeaker and position of the patient to do aided audiometry in such cases? Same procedure. If you are looking for the aided audiometer, you don't have to change the procedure. Like any other aided uh, uh, hearing aid, put the uh, uh, cross hearing aid. Only thing is, you are looking forward to which side. So, you have to find out. what is the advantage in terms of localization speech discrimination if sound is being incident from poorer side so that is very important that only if you keep that in mind uh, same procedure can be used no issue okay yes sir um is any relaxation provided by the indian government to those who have sst uh but still they don't uh, have the disability percentage because they no. also have quality uh, they the quality of life is affected in them as well so yes so far so far uh, it is not there ssd has not been brought in the domain for uh, helping people under the adip scheme so uh, adip scheme do, do not provide uh, for this uh, hearing aid but they can get uh, hearing aid from the other scheme so like uh, we have one more uh, scheme which provides hearing aid voicefully but that is only for aged people not for the youngster so those who have 60 60 year and above they are given hearing aid irrespective of hearing disability so under that scheme they can get but uh, not in any other scheme government does not have that system right now in place okay okay thank you thank you so much sir Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's a great pleasure. Okay. Uh, and many have uh, thanked you for such a good presentation yesterday as well and today also. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And, and I just want, I just wanted to uh, say a few words, sir. Uh, I I went through your presentation. So uh, so many things as effort. Uh, Uh, which was there uh, ultimate it, it was really nice uh, like uh, innovations which you, you people have done in your, your institute really good thank you so much thank you uh
Thank you one and all. Uh, have a great Sunday ahead.